This is a quick video to overview some of the features and functionality of the Philips Patient Information Center IX or PIC-IX. Please see the instructions for use for additional information. The main screen displays real-time waves, numerics, and alarms for multiple patients. It shows a specific number of patient sectors configured for your unit. The number of waves and the amount of information in a sector depend on the size of the sector. All tasks start in the patient sector. When you place your cursor inside the sector, it is outlined in an orange border and icons appear. In addition to the waves and numerics, other information include the caregiver icon, you can see Jenny is the nurse here, the bed and equipment label, monitor 9, resuscitation status if you have it configured, the location access point if you're using a wireless device, the patient name, and a group if configured. The group is shown in the red border and Mr. Ross has atrial fibrillation. Might have screen notes if they're added and a battery icon can also show. One of the most important functions of course is to display patient alarms. There are two types of patient alarms, red and yellow, and three types of technical alarms called inups, soft, don't make a sound, Hard inops do make a sound and are cyan colored, and high severity, red or yellow. These are indicative of technical conditions. A patient's red alarm appears with three stars and indicates a life-threatening event, such as a systole or extreme bradycardia. There are two types of patient yellow alarms, yellow limit alarms, shown with two stars, or short yellow arrhythmia with one star. Both types are indicative of a non-life-threatening condition. When a patient is reporting with multiple alarms, the PIX will display and enunciate the most severe alarm first. This arrow indicates the presence of additional alarm messages with a timestamp. Select the yellow Acknowledge button to turn off the alarm sound, or you can press the blue background. This will change the sector background to black, and a check mark will be seen in the banner. If not an alarm, an icon may be configured to print a delayed strip from the sector. You can have up to three shortcut buttons that provide quick access to specific applications and tasks. When you select a numeric, menu options display that allow you to customize your view of the patient. You can change the heart rate limit, for example, when you click on heart rate. Select the patient window icon if you would like to see additional patient information. In a single display, the patient window and other applications open at the bottom of the screen. The sectors remain visible but compressed in the upper half. If your system is a dual display, you may see this application with much more data because it will open in a full screen. These icons appear at the top of the patient window and all applications and allow you to print reports access the system help, which is the instructions for use, or close the application. In the patient window, you can also select pause to temporarily prevent all patient alarms from visually and audibly announcing. When alarms are paused or off, the system displays a message together with the alarms paused or the audio pause symbol. Your system may be set up to allow the pausing of yellow alarms only. Alarms will automatically resume after the configured time. You can, however, resume alarms manually at any time by selecting the pause button in the patient window again. The taskbar at the bottom of the application windows provide easy access to additional applications and functions. Or select the main setup button to access all of the available clinical and support applications. Let's go through a quick review of workflow. You can assign a bed or equipment for a sector for monitoring. We're going to use this empty sector down here. Select the Manage Patient button in the sector when you want to assign a bed label. You can also select this button to admit, transfer, or discharge a patient with an existing bed label. The sector assignment window here displays a list of beds available for your unit or for other units. In this case, we're going to pick bed 5. Be sure to select the correct label. You can also at this time select a monitor for monitoring this patient, but it is optional. Then select OK. 
The Information Center displays and saves physiological data as soon as the patient is assigned to a bed and monitoring device. You must, however, admit a patient to the Information Center in order for the patient's name to appear on the display to correctly identify the patient data in reports or before you transfer the patient. An asterisk appears next to all the required fields for admission. Enter patient demographic information and at a minimum the last name and a unique identifier for that patient. Select the patient's gender. This is very important, particularly for cardiac patients. And select the date of birth. You can actually write over it, highlight it, and write right over the number. You can add the height and weight also if you would like. Those are used for calculations at the monitor. You can add now the resuscitation status if you wish. A full resuscitation status will not show any icon, only the DNR are modified. You can add a patient group if that would be helpful in identifying the patient or those screen notes. Select the apply button. If the paste mode is set to unconfirm, it will make you choose the paste mode. If the patient has a pacemaker, the pace mode must be turned on so that the STAR algorithm can detect and reject pace pulses from the heart rate count. Otherwise, these pace pulses could be detected as beats and the monitor may not alarm for any systole condition. If the patient does not have a pacemaker, turn off the pace mode to allow the STAR algorithm to work most effectively. Always verify the patient category and pace mode are correct. Alternatively, you can select the Find Patient button if you are connected to your hospital information system or wish to transfer a patient from a different unit. Open the Manage Patient application and this time select the Find Patient. Type in some criteria to help your search. Entering a unique ID will get better search results. Select the Search button. A list of matching patients displays on the bottom of the dialog box. Highlight the name of the patient you want to add and select OK. A message asks you if you want to admit, readmit a previous patient, or transfer a patient from another unit. Please read and confirm the warning messages so that you do not accidentally transfer the wrong patient out of another unit. Other information will automatically fill in with this method. As reviewed before, the center section can now be filled with additional information such as the DNR status, patient group, and screen notes. To assign or unassign equipment for a patient, select the ellipsis next to the equipment label. Available equipment will show on the left and currently assigned equipment will show on the right. Scroll down the list to find the correct equipment label and select it. Then use the right arrow to add to the assigned list. Select OK. To remove equipment, just reverse the process. Use Transport Standby to indicate a patient's transport location and to temporarily put the equipment in standby. For example, this patient's going to have an MRI procedure and we want to put the monitor in standby. Select the OK button. You will see a white banner in the sector to indicate when equipment is in standby. The bed label is now shown in parenthesis and if you hover over it, you will see the temporary location. Click in the sector to resume the equipment or access the Manage Patient application and select the Resume button. You can adjust alarms right from the patient sector or from the measurements application. For example, you can use the ECG page to change heart rate alarms or the lead set. The area on the right of the measurement settings shows a summary of the patient's five most frequent alarms and a graphic trend of the data during that specific time period. Use the arrhythmia page to turn specific arrhythmia alarms on or off. Other measurements and changes include ST, STE, and QT. The SPO2 page can contain the controls for two devices if two are present that can measure SPO2. You can have some additional choices for the MX40 SPO2D. You can adjust the NBP limit and in fact there are additional controls such as start or stop an NBP measurement. 
The alarm summary application allows you to see alarms and trends for your patient's most common vital signs. Fast Alarm Review enables you to quickly acknowledge and view the current alarm data and take immediate action. If you are configured, you can select the Acknowledge button to automatically open the Fast Alarm Review. You can also access specific alarms from the banner. Depending on your screen resolution, the alarm strip contains at least 30 seconds of waves preceding the alarm and up to 15 seconds after the announced time depending on how quickly you open it. You can print, record, annotate, or delete using the icons on the right of the strip. Close the application and return to whatever was open previously. You may wish to review data or create safe strips for your patients. Select the review icon from the sector. The review applications can be customized with specific data types or tiles such as waves, trends, and events. Each tile in a review application has its own set of controls located on the right. The compressed wave strip displays 1 to 60 minutes of full disclosure waves. Select the toggle icon to see other tiles such as the wave strip. The time focus of the strip is shown with black carrots at the top of the strip. Change the wave size by selecting the calibration bar. If you want to add or remove waves, select the waves button and select the ones you wish to have in your strip. You can also drag the bottom of the tile down if you want to see more information. Select the current speed to change it. You might want to do this before you annotate a strip. To create a save strip, select the yellow annotation icon on the right. A dialog box opens. You can add a label, add a comment, or your initials. To make caliper measurements of the ECG intervals, position the cursor on the first measurement point then click and drag to the second measurement point. The measurement value is displayed between the lines. In the dialog box, select the desired measurement button to display the value. Make other measurements as needed. You can see horizontal measurements are also made at the same time. Then click the Save button. The measurements are saved to the strip. This is the tabular tile. It will show you vital signs in a tabular format. You can also switch to the graphic trend tile. Up to five measurements can be viewed at once, but only the first is active. To activate a second trend, select it. To correlate data, you can drag the trend down by the scale to overlay one or more trends. Please see the quick guide reviewing patient data for additional information. The alarm review application allows you to view all alarms and save strips. You can get to it by selecting the review button at the bottom of any application window. The alarm review application can be configured to default to one of three formats, but only the tabular view will be covered. This view allows you to see an alarm strip at the top of the application and a list of available alarms on the bottom. Select an alarm from the list to change the strip. The time focus for arrhythmia alarms, such as this Brady alarm, is the onset of the alarm condition and is shown with green carrots. The announced time will be later and is shown with black carrots. In regular limit alarms, you will only have the black carrots that show you the announced time. The vital signs for all strips are at the announced time or the black carrot time. To filter the alarm group displayed, select the alarm filter icon on the side and let's look for that save strip. You may want to print this strip, either as one of many strips on a single report, by choosing the print icon in the caption bar, or you can just print a single strip with the icon on the right. To search for alarms by type, enter search text in the search box and then select the search icon. A list of strips will display. To create a custom label for use when saving a strip, select the icon to the right, then add, delete, or sort labels. If you are using Release C of the PICIX, a prior data icon in the review applications indicates that the selected patient has data stored from a prior discharge or from a transfer. Select a stay from the list. The application window opens. 
the caption bar changes from black to teal and you can see the prior data. From here, you can select other review applications to see data from that time frame. Select the current unit button to return to current data. You can transfer a patient to an available bed in any sector within your unit or to another unit. We are going to be transferring Toby Herring. First, select the Manage Patient button in his sector. Then select the orange Transfer button. Only a list of available beds will show. Mr. Herring is going to the Progressive Care Unit, Bed 9. Select the OK button. Carefully read the warning, then confirm the transfer by selecting the orange Transfer button. After a transfer, the patient's name is cleared equipment returns to unit default settings and may be put in standby or clear automatically. Mr. Davis in bed 8 is to be discharged. Select the Manage Patient button. This time we're going to select the pink Discharge button. The Discharge dialog box opens. When you discharge the patient, the PICIX will save the patient data for all admitted patients for up to 7 days. If configured, Equipment assigned to the bed may be put into standby or clear automatically. You do not need to readmit a patient to review this stored data or to look at data on a patient in a different unit. You can search a patient. We will want to search for data for Mr. Davis. You can see he was discharged from the ICU and you can click on his data and it will show as prior data. This concludes this video. For additional information, please review your Philips Patient Information Center IX instructions for use. Thank you.